It's 2023, and if you're watching this because you realize you need to start preparing for emergencies that are just over the horizon, welcome. This is the Urban Sentinel, and let's get into it. For those of you new to the world of emergency preparedness and prepping, don't worry. It's not as crazy and chaotic as people on the outside of the circle make it seem. Now, that's not to say that underneath the surface of the creativity and ingenuity, there's not a little bit of madness, but that's all part of the course. I'm sure you've seen dozens of videos, no matter where you are, whether you live in Europe, Asia, Africa, South America, North America, doesn't matter. Across the board, every single place, every single region, there is a high level of instability and insecurity going on that is affecting everyone. You probably have this feeling of uneasiness as if you know that there's something that you should be doing, but you're not, sure, not sure exactly what it is. This is what I'm here to help you with. And hopefully by the end of this short video, you'll have a better idea of what you need to do to get started in prepping. So right off the top, first off, number one, prepping is planning. It's nothing more than a conscious, active movement towards identifying and achieving a goal. That's it. Anything else that you hear is a lot of extra words and syllables thrown in there, but prepping is planning. Number two, you can't plan for every scenario, but you have to accept that the reality of there's a greater possibility that that thing that you think or that you've been told will never happen happens. Number three, prepping starts with you. Everything that is you, your mental health, your physical health, your social well-being, your financial well-being, everything that revolves around you and makes you who you are, that's where you need to start first. Because if you try doing anything else outside of that, you're going to fail. Because if you are not prepared on that level to begin with, all your other actions are going to be spinning your wheels and getting nowhere. Start small with everything. Be consistent though. Setting up one, two, maybe three or four small tasks that you can get done and get them done efficiently is much better than trying to go after one giant goal that you struggle with and you eventually fail to complete and you spent all that time and all your energy trying to do that one thing. So start small and work your way through. Number five, very important. You're racing yourself, no one else. My status as a prepper, someone else's status as a prepper, watching different videos for emergency preparedness and everything else, it doesn't matter where those individuals are at. You are racing yourself. So you need to be able to pace yourself. You burn yourself out real quick trying to keep up with people that have weeks, months, or years ahead of you. If you can get things done, even one or two things, and you get them done right and you don't have to go back and do it over again, that puts you a little bit further ahead. It makes the next task a little bit easier. You plan out all of your steps and a lot of times you have to think it over, rethink it, and replan it. But you get it done a little bit at a time and then when you look back over your shoulder, you start to see how much farther you've come along. Number six, basic areas and ideas to cover in your planning in general. First off, how many people in your group? Is it just you, you're flying solo, or do you have other people? Now, I will say this, I have other videos that I talk about that in, but for right now, if you're new to emergency preparedness, you need to focus on your immediate group, whatever that is. You can't worry about the Johnny come latelys, the people that you have a loose association with that you know come knocking on your door later on. Plan for your group first. Now, with that being said, there are some basic things to go through. First aid, medical equipment, medical needs, prescription medicines. A lot of people are on a lot of medications that they need on a daily or weekly basis, you need to make sure that you either one, have access to that or have a way to make sure that you have a decent enough stockpile to keep you going for a while. Water. It's actually the number one, but with water, you need to make sure that you have available water supplies, bottled water already bought, water purifiers. Water filters are good for getting general sediment and debris, but water purifiers remove a lot of the chemicals and the toxins and the other nasty stuff that's in both municipal water 
as well as open source air water from lakes, streams, that sort of thing, rainwater. So you want to be able to have containers with water purifiers or purification tablets. You also need to be able to have containers that are safe enough to store water in that aren't going to leach chemicals into it. Food, canned food, dried box goods, things like that. Things that are shelf stable and have a long shelf life. Now, in many cases, it's you can simply buy a little bit more of what you're already buying. But what you want to avoid is a dependency on microwave food and freezer full of food for the primary reason that if you go without power and you have no way of keeping the freezer frozen and the refrigerator cool, a lot of that food is gonna be no good very fast. But if you have things that are on a shelf that can sit in a can, sit in a sealed jar, or closed up in plastic tubs so they stay fresh, then you only have to worry about the means to which you need to cook it. In many cases, it can be eaten straight out of the container or may only require a minimum amount of cooking to make it palatable again. Consider starting with a small supply of the basics, which you may already have. Flour, sugar, salt, dry pasta, you know, cans of beans, preferably if you even have just, you know, baked beans, if that's something you like, have that tuna fish, peanut butter, if you're not allergic to it, or any of those other shelf stable items, you basically want to be able to have them in small containers. So if it's a case of once you open it, it needs to be used unless it's being refrigerated. You don't have to have a large 22 ounce can of baked beans that you open up, but you only eat, you know, three to five ounces and you don't have a refrigerator to keep the rest st stable for the next few days. So if you can find smaller cans and buy a few more of them, that makes it easier to measure out the portions depending upon how many people are eating. Clothing. In terms of prepping, yes, there's all types of clothing and gear dedicated towards living that rugged life. And you can buy that and you can spend a lot of money and most of it is pretty good. But just to keep it simple, you want clothes that you can sit around in all day long, be comfortable, and then if for whatever reason, you end up sliding down a muddy hill and have to crawl through a junkyard, you still want clothing that's going to hold up to that level of abuse for several days at a time. Because if you've got the nice fancy clothes that looks great and you feel good in them, but they tear, they rip, and they fall apart when something like that happens just one time, you're out of luck. So you want to be able to go into a Walmart or go even to some of the uh, big box stores and just buy a couple of pair of pants, t-shirts, sweatshirts, what have you to keep on hand for that purpose. Something else to consider, base camp or mobile, depending upon what your situation is, again, in part of the planning, do you intend to stay where you're at no matter what the situation is or do you have a second location to go to somewhere else that if you have to evacuate from your home, your apartment, from your town or city and go somewhere else, do you have your own destination? Because if you're waiting on the authorities to say, go to this location for safety, they're telling that not to you as a little on the side secret. They're telling that to you and probably a hundred thousand to a million other people in your area. So you won't be the first and only person waiting in line for the services to get to that location. And in both situations, if you intend to bug out, how are you doing it? Do you have a vehicle? Are you relying on someone else to take you? Are you going on foot? Do you have the capability, which brings us back to taking care of yourself first? Do you have the physical capability of making a five mile, 10 mile, 15 mile trek on foot? It might be through the open country. It might be through town after town, through the city streets, across parking lots and, you know, concrete up and down, you know, the streets until you get to where you need to go. You need to be able to take that into consideration where you are on the map and draw that line out of where you could go and how are you going to get there. Number seven, prepping is to one extent about planning. Yes, but part of the plan is having the necessary tools and equipment and things that you need to get those jobs done, to be able to be prepared. And with that, it comes down to, in many cases for most of us, you have to spend money. Unless you have all the resources available to grow and make and manufacture everything that you could possibly need, you're going to have to spend money. So you need to shop smart, you know, shop online, look for discounts, use coupons when you go into the store. Consider that if you don't have a membership to a big box store like a Costco's or a B's, 
BJ's, think about the items that they have there and the value that it can bring to you and your preps to make it easier for you to survive. So the cost of the initial membership for what you're going to get out of it may be more beneficial to you that way. And, you know, there's also flea markets and thrift stores and tag sales and worse comes to worse, Walmart, Dollar Tree, Amazon, places like that will have bits and pieces of all the different things that you could use to help you out in your prepping. Number eight, brush up on your history. And I don't mean ancient history. I don't even mean, you know, history from the last 200 years, just 25 years back from present day, go back 25 years. Look at all of the different natural disasters that have occurred, the man-made disasters that have occurred. Look at the different countries that have been in civil wars, have been invaded by other countries, what you need to look at in those stories, in those videos, in those news clippings are one, the event itself, what led up to the event, or more specifically, how people became aware of the event, how they responded to it, how the governments in charge responded and handled it, and then the aftermath afterwards. But unfortunately, one thing you will see, spoiler, is the pattern is clear that it's always the same. There's always some type of event that pops up, even when it's relatively new or it's a surprise. The event happens. An overwhelmingly large body of people are completely shocked that something like that could actually happen. It goes back to, oh, that will never happen. The handling of the emergency from that point forward by the government, no matter where it is, pick a country, doesn't matter, comes down to too heavy handed, they go too hard, too far, or they don't do enough in the immediate time that they had the opportunity to do something. And then the aftermath as follows is too many people, once again, once it's all said and done, they don't make changes on their own in case the next time that happens. They don't prepare for the next time their city gets flooded or the next time there's a wildfire or when this next president ends up in a coup and there's another civil war. They don't take the small steps they need after that last disaster to mentally prepare themselves and physically prepare themselves to handle the situation when the next time it happens. And it's always a when, not just a maybe possibly if. So I know I barely touched the surface for a lot of you that are watching this that are looking for more information on prepping and emergency preparedness. So one, these videos in the playlist here, click on them, watch them. I've got a long set of different videos covering multiple topics when it comes to food and food resources, gardening, self-defense, you know, emergency preparedness gear, as well as different scenarios in terms of SHTF that have happened or could possibly happen. And, you know, a lot of it is my personal perspective on that in looking at those situations. But it's, again, things that you start looking at now, preparing so you have more information ahead of you, you have more resources that you can look at making available to make your transition into prepping and the prepping mindset a lot easier. So give this video a like, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one.